Hello, I'm Sir Dave King, Chairman of the Centre for Climate Repair at Cambridge and also Chairman of the Climate Crisis Advisory Group. Today, the, the average global temperature for the whole planet is 1.35 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial level. The chances of staying below 1.5 don't look at all good. Um, but worse than that, the real issue is the avoidance of the major tipping points. And the first of the tipping points has now actually tipped. And the reason is, this is the Arctic Circle region. And over the last 20 years, the Arctic Circle region has been heating up at four times the rate of the rest of the planet, which means that the Arctic Circle is now three degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial level. So when we look at the Arctic Circle, the tipping point there means loss of ice over the Arctic Ocean. And as you lose the ice, blue sea is exposed. Ice reflects sunlight back into space, blue sea soaks it up. And so the, over those three months, the, the ice disappears very quickly. But ice is again formed over the ocean during the polar winter, but it's a thin layer. So as soon as the sun comes back, it disappears and we get this heating up. And the result of the heating up is first of all, Greenland now sits in that blue sea during the polar summer. It's now losing its ice, and I use this word carefully, irreversibly, leading eventually to six and a half meter sea level rise. If we look at the permafrost regions in the land around the ocean, of course, the North Pole is roughly in the middle of the ocean. The permafrost regions contain a vast amount of methane, and methane is a much more serious greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. When all of that methane is emitted over, over a period of 20 years, and it's now being emitted quite rapidly, global temperatures will rise by five to eight degrees centigrade. So the combination of these events means that what's happening in the Arctic Circle impacts on the whole planet. So if we pass a tipping point, it means we have to change our terminology. I don't believe we any longer can simply believe that reducing emissions deeply and rapidly is enough. Yes, we have to do that. We should do it much more quickly because every ton of greenhouse gases we put up now, we've got to remove again. So going forward, what's, the, what's a safe future for humanity? Today, we're well over 500 parts per million of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, pre-industrially 275, a safe future less than 350. We've got to take out a vast amount of the greenhouse gases that we put up there through burning coal, oil and gas. So there's a, a whole set of challenges that we, we need to accept, but at the same time, and this is the piece that most people are startled by, we also need to refreeze the Arctic, because if we don't do that, we'll all be cooked before we've done the others.